You guys asked for it. Here comes the follow-up to the Thought Emporium on negative ion products. This one called, My Video Got Two Companies Shut Down. Based on the previous video, rightfully so. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's take a look. Simple question. Which of these items is the healthiest? <laughs> uh, let's see, what do we got here? A, uh, it's like we got a salad, a ridiculous bracelet, an eye mask, which don't know if it has that ridiculous thorium powder on there or not, and some type of ID card laced with God knows what. Hopefully they didn't put that stuff in the salad, because that would actually make it even worse. But if they didn't, it would be the salad. Though, that salad looks pretty plain, not a whole lot of, just looks like leaves. You should like to have a little more colorful vegetables in my salad, like tomatoes, carrots, whatnot. But anyway, it's probably still healthier than the other stuff. This salad, this bracelet, this eye mask, or this badge necklace thing. Well, thanks to science, I can now use my healthometer to see which of these releases the most healthy part. <laughs> Love it. Geiger counter as a healthometer. This brings up one interesting point. There is a theory called hormesis theory, which basically says a little bit of it's good for you, as in a little bit of radiation is good for you. This theory is not endorsed by the nuclear industry, nor the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. That policy is ALARA, as low as reasonably achievable. We want to limit dose because dose from ionizing radiation is risky and you use reasonable endeavors to lower the risk as much as reasonably achievable. But there is a theory that's out there. I wonder if that's what these products claim or are they just going to deny they're radioactive? First, the salad. Hmm, nothing really here. That's odd. And the bracelet? Okay. Getting a little better. Starting to detect some health particles now. Health particles. Yeah, so we're on the order of microsieverts per hour. That's, that's a fairly low dose, but still, you're getting some counts. How about the eye mask? Now we're cooking with gas. And finally, the badge thing. Wow, five microsieverts per hour. Okay. Yeah, that's a, that'd be a radiation area requiring a, requiring a briefing. <laughs> Possibly contaminated. I don't know what that stuff laced in. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a winner. Wait, this isn't my healthometer. Somebody seems to have switched it for a Geiger counter. <laughs> Gotta love it. This isn't to be confused with these air ionizers, which use electricity to generate those negative ions. But like the bracelets, they're quack nonsense all the same. As I said in the previous video, negative ions, so an ion is just an atom that's negatively charged has extra electrons and they seem to when they talk about these negative ions refer to electrons so negative ions is just electricity so using electricity to make them that's one th then yeah that'll get you there but still doesn't it doesn't do anything beneficial now this stuff isn't gonna isn't going to dose you with radioactive material because your source is just electricity. Sure, they put out negative ions, and at least they're not radioactive, but they also release ozone, which is poison. Oh, well, I didn't know about that. Okay, so they'll, they'll poison you either way. Great. So as a rule, when it comes to products that claim to make you instantly more healthy, you're better off just eating a salad and avoiding all this horseshit entirely. Now, before I talk about the new and equally horrific items that I found, I want to give a very exciting update. Both representatives of Amazon and the U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Here we Commission go. about the video, and was asked to file a formal complaint with both. As a result, Amazon has now pulled dozens and dozens of these dangerous quack products from their site. Wow, that's got some real results. Good job. And better still, the NRC has banned the sale of these items in the US, and at least two companies that were making them have been shut down. Love when the system works. That's what the NRC is supposed to do. Protect the health and safety of Americans from radioisotopes. And they did. Good job. Say that this is a massive win is an understatement. I honestly never thought that a stupid YouTube video could make such a real impact, but I am thrilled that it did.
Now it is so much harder for these quacks to sell their products, and people are much safer for it. But that's not to say the fight is over. The snake oil salesmen that make these products have simply found new ways of marketing their garbage. As they always do, but hey, that, that is still a huge win, getting, getting those quacks, the potentially dangerous ones. The, the goofy ones that are just selling stuff that doesn't actually hurt you but says it, that's just fraud. But this is fraud and poison. So, I'll take that win too. Good job to the guys over at Thought Emporium. Instead of negative ion, now they call the problem. And good on the guys at the uh, Nuclear Regulatory Commission for taking this seriously. Things like quantum energy or scalar energy uh, or similar uh, vague nonsense terms. But nonetheless, they are much harder to find. So now let's talk about one of those sounds like it's something from Scientology. They found, and then I want to talk about what to do about them. Now that I know how seriously the NRC takes these issues, it's so much easier to find and report them when they pop up. If you go to the NRC's website right here, up at the top of the page is report a safety concern. That's how seriously they take their job, and it's good. But what exactly did I find? Well, you saw them in the intro. The first are these eye masks from a company called Energy Armor. With the bracelets, I saw some people argue that the risk from the dust was minimal, but come on, strapping these things to your face and gently huffing the dust all night or getting it in your eyes? That can't possibly be good. That's the worst way to get dosed is internally. One, the dose is more because... You know, depending on alphas and betas in particular, they lose some energy as they go through your skin. Alphas won't even penetrate the skin, but they will, you know, be absorbed by upper layer skin cells. And betas, some of that energy would be absorbed by it, but internally they're given free reign. Another reason why that's worse is it's harder to remove. You remove the source from your outside, that's, that's pretty easy, but if you've got powder inside your body, you're going to have to rely on natural biological processes to get it out. And sometimes, depending on what the material is, like iodine, as an example, can get stuck in your thyroid. So internal dose is way, way worse. I ran the exact same tests as last time, first checking with a Geiger counter and then using my gamma spectrometer to determine the element. To my utter lack of surprise, they too were full of thorium. However, what was... Thorium needs to be used in nuclear power plants, not this crap. Interesting was I picked up a bracelet from the same company and it was totally empty not even a trace of radiation, which is awesome because now instead of actively polluting its customer's environment with radioactive dust, they've instead just committed fraud by claiming a bracelet releases ions when they definitely don't and is just a piece of silicon. Moving on from the eye mask, there's another company called Numi that makes the Numi card. It's this conference badge looking thing that even came with a lanyard, but wow is this thing radioactive. I have a fair collection of radioactive samples and this thing is one of the hotter items in my Five microsieverts per hour? Wow. So again, like I said in the previous video, member of the general public, your annual limit is one millisievert. So you get 200 hours of wear time with this lanyard at your little radioactive business conference here <laughs> per year. And you can't get any source of radiation beyond background from anything else. Uh, wow. Gotcha. The only thing spicier than this is a piece of uranium glazed pottery called Fiesta Ware, which maxes out at about 12 microsieverts per hour. I remember hearing about uh, Fiesta Ware. Yeah, that, that stuff is, is quite radioactive. The Numi card hits a toasty 5.3 microsieverts per hour, which is about five times as radioactive as even the hottest bracelet. Though the eye mask was still a nice toasty 2.4. What I found really terrifying was that when you go to the Numi card website, one of their other products is the Numi patch. This to me implies that it's something you stick onto yourself and God knows what's in it. Oh no, 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 in your bloodstream, what? Does this actually release radioactive material into you like the way you have a patch on, like a nicotine patch for people recovering from, who are trying to quit smoking? Wow, and other active herbs such as ceramic powder. Read radioactive. What it's leaching into the user's body. Now, I need to make something very clear. Handling something like this for short periods of time is actually absolutely safe. Even a few hours of exposure won't hurt you as long as none of the dust from these items ends up in your lungs. The radiation itself isn't strong enough at these levels to hurt you from short exposure. That's true. You're at no higher risk of cancer from handling this for a few minutes than anyone else. However, 
When the designed purpose of the thing is to be worn 24-7, 365 days a year, you start getting into the danger zone. That's where, at, at that dose rate, you're going you're gonna to easily bust the administrative limit and challenge the uh, 100 millisieverts per year, which is the threshold at risk where the risk of cancer becomes evident. Especially if that radioactive dust gets inside oh, your, your eyes. Which seems likely when you're literally strapping it to your face. Interestingly, this is actually the same reason why uranium glazed pottery, like I showed before, is actually remarkably safe, even though it's more radioactive. The uranium is well contained in the glaze, so as long as it doesn't chip or fracture, it's totally safe to handle. My piece True. was cut before it was sent to me, so I keep it in a plastic bag to contain any dust. But an intact piece of Fiesta ware is totally safe to drink out of, for example, as long as it's intact. Yeah, the hazard is a lot of that stuff is, uh, the ones I've seen are a, a good bit older and kind of brittle, so that's, that's the real bit. But I guess it's probably not a whole lot more than any other broken pottery. You don't want to have any shards of broken ceramic inside you either. <laughs> <laughs> the reason the negative ion stuff is dangerous is exposure time is much higher than a dinner plate, and the dust is uncontained and sheds easily, or worse still, pure powdered radioactive material is contained in the items and is easy enough to release by accident. Which does make it a bit funny when schools get evacuated from a kid bringing in a piece of Fiesta ware. Unless they throw a wood chipper and have the rest of their classmates line up in front of the output, it's actually a pretty safe item to show off if you're careful not to smash it. Radiation isn't a boogeyman, you just need to understand the risks and dangers. Amen. Radiation, um, radioactive materials can absolutely drive human progress to a glorious future with nuclear power plants. But people just need to be educated and informed on what's safe, behavior, what's unsafe behavior, and what you can do to, um, to minimize your risks. That's really what it comes down to. Just like anything else, any other hazardous chemicals, um, tools, you need to know how to use them. Because the most dangerous aspect of radioactive material is people that just don't know how to handle them. Generally, keeping to short exposures within dose limits and making sure there's no dust and you're safe. Which is why I tend to make fun of shows like Chernobyl, which tend to get that very, very wrong. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate someone who shares thoughts on Chernobyl. Uh, by the way, Chernobyls are like my most uh, disliked videos ever, which, which I still find hilarious. Chernobyl's a curious choice because their, their reactor physics is actually decent for a TV show, but their uh, radiation protection, no. <laughs> Just no. But it's also why the negative ion products should be avoided and ideally just not sold. They violate all of those rules. They're inherently dusty and are meant to be worn for extended periods of time. So, what do we do about this? Well, the great thing is, like I said, the NRC takes all of this very seriously. So when you go onto the NRC website, there's this giant report a concern button near the top of the page. This brings you to another page where there's a select- I just showed this, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> ...things that you can do. Personally, what I suggest is emailing their allegations department. Now, obviously, you don't want to spam their inbox, and please don't do that. But writing a simple, professional letter with as much detail about the items in question is the best way to go about it. In my case, I'll be writing to them about the Numi card and energy armor, and outlining exactly what I found. I'll include the Geiger counter measurements and the results of the gamma spectroscopy, as well as links to the products themselves. Once you file a complaint, someone from the department will reach out. <laughs> in my case, when I was contacted after the last video went out, I got on a phone call with the fantastic ladies in the allegation department and explained the situation. I then provided all the information I just explained and was then sent a letter via email with the contents of my claim and what they were going to do about it. That's cool. They responded. To, I'm used to seeing that NRC letterhead. That's actually the same seal, that same little blue tint. It fades over time that I had on my uh, senior reactor operator license for the nuclear plant that I worked at. Basically, it said that they'd be contacting each of the companies and sellers and would send me another letter in 30 days once they've made their decisions and contacted the companies. Sure enough, 30 days later, another letter arrived detailing the results, which in this case was banning several companies from selling their products in the US. Now, to be clear, not all radioactive items are banned for sale in the consumer market, just ones deemed frivolous by the NRC. Here's the difference. This smoke detector here with the americium source is labeled accordingly. We know it's radioactive. The other things, those negative ion things, don't say they are. We just need a little bit of transparency here, and then we're okay with radioactive material. But 
people having no knowledge of it, that's unacceptable. So, the radioactive material must serve a purpose. It can't just be haphazard. So, thoriated welding rods are allowed, but thorium-laced underwear, not so much. <laughs> oh, no. And yes, those were some of the items we looked at in the last video. Showing it going specifically around the crotch. No. Reproductive cells are vulnerable, are especially vulnerable to the effects of ionizing radiation. By the time this video goes out, I'll have filed a new complaint with them about the new items, as well as a few stragglers I found on Amazon. But if you find products like these, you're absolutely encouraged to write in. Not just to the NRC, but whatever your local regulatory commission is in your country. I'm Canadian, so I'll also be writing to the Canadian Nuclear Safety Commission as well, for example. It was really cool to see the follow-up and to see the Thought Emporium show the correspondence he got from the NRC. That was, uh, that was really cool to see, see uh, the, uh, to see a concerned reporting process in action from, uh, from somebody on YouTube. That's, that's really cool to see. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.